We'll talk a little bit about who needs to look at your abstract before you submit it. And then Neil is going to walk us through a series of uh, drafts of an abstract that she's worked on from her undergraduate career. So you'll see it in different iterations, which is really great that you can see how she changed things and focused things. And she'll walk you through those. But first of all, let's go to our first slide on what is an abstract. So, you know, when you look up abstract in the dictionary, it needs a lot of different things. And this is a, an abstract painting by um, Jackson Pollock. And uh, you, this may be your understanding of an abstract. I, I talk to students all the time and they said, well, I don't know exactly what an abstract is. So that's one reason we kind of created this uh, this presentation so that you have a clear understanding what the expectations are and what they look like. But the, the UAB Library Guide, the, the majority of this comes from their wonderful resource guide on writing abstracts. So we've used theirs as a structure. But this is the definition that comes directly from the UAB Library Guide. So, you know, an abstract is a condensed or summary version of an original work. An abstract gives you enough information about the original work so that the reader can make an informed decision about whether they want to read the whole work <laughs> to obtain more detail. I, I kind of compare it to the trailer for a film, right? You know, it's going to pull you in. It's going to give you the basic information as to whether you want to spend the money on it or not. But uh, so most of them are going to be 300 words or less. If you're submitting to the uh, expos, they're 250 words or less. So you have to be concise and precise. You're going to see that as we progress. Let's go to the next slide. So why do you need them? Okay, so I just talked about Expo and presenting your research, but you're also going to need them if you're submitting papers, if you're submitting to journals, and it really is, as I say here, the coin of the academic realm. So it is how you communicate your research uh, in all different formats. Uh, you're going to be asked to condense the research that you've done into a concise and precise summary so that people know, is this something that I want to read? Is this connected to what I'm working on? Am I interested in this? Do I want to give you money? All of these sorts of things. So writing an abstract is just a really important skill that you develop as an undergrad so that in your future careers as a graduate student and even if you're going into the medical field, any of those professional fields, you're going to be writing abstracts. And even in just regular jobs, I mean, uh, in my job, for example, as a staff member, I have to often write condensed summaries of work that I've done. And so it's an incredible skill to develop. No matter what path you take in life, it's really valuable. So um, that's, again, one of the reasons we really want to emphasize that uh, in this uh, presentation and why we've created this workshop because we really feel that it will help you all along the way and it really helps you kind of prepare your your poster as well now I will say that in general people do all of the research first and then write the abstract now I know if you're working on something during the summer for example it's a very condensed time especially if you're in a summer program and you're not going to be able to do everything before you write the abstract because, for example, our abstract for the expo is due on July 10th, not that far away. And many people are not going to have all of their information, all their data, and that's okay. Uh, so these types of presentations are an exception to it, but in the, for the most part, you're going to have your work done first and then you write the abstract because, you, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit of putting the cart before the horse if you're – going to say this is what I'm going to do and then it totally changes after you do it <laughs> then your abstract really isn't an accurate summary of it but we understand that in the expo uh, format you can't do that all the time but if you're submitting to other places this general format is after you've done all of your research then you write the abstract next slide please All right, so here's the structure of an abstract and the five goals. And again, all of this comes from the UAB Libraries Guide. Wonderful uh, resource, uh, lots of great research resources with the library. I can't recommend it enough. But again, you can kind of think of these five goals that you're going to try to accomplish when you're writing an abstract. So the first thing is you're telling us what you've done, okay? What is the research? This can be even done in the title, okay, of your 
of your paper or your presentation. Titles are really important as well. We've talked about that, but you know that gives us just a quick preview, but then your abstract goes into further detail, detail of what you have done. Why? Why is this important? Okay, why it has been done. The rationale. Um, how it was done. What were your methods? And finally, what was done, your results, your, and then your significance, your conclusions. So you can see an abstract, if you've created a research poster before or presented your research, you know, the abstract falls along the same pattern as how you would create a poster or a presentation. So it's a nice way to guide your actual presentation and your poster as well for Expo. So think of it that way. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. All right, so the what has been done. So when you have research, you're gonna have objectives, all right, because you're trying to create new knowledge for the world, right? That's the big picture, right? New knowledge, you're creating it by doing certain experiments, by investigating certain new techniques or what have you. But you wanna clearly state what your hypothesis is, okay, or your thesis statement, if it's in the humanities. You know, what are you trying to accomplish? What question are you answering? What question do you, th what do you think is going to happen? What do you think, what has happened? Okay, what are the objectives of it? Um, so your res results may change from your objectives and that's fine because you're gonna talk about that when you get to your results and with your future developments and conclusions. But at, at the start of every study of every research project, you should have clearly defined objectives. Okay, so you're going to have that at the start. And then a clearly identified hypothesis. Sometimes people will even label it hypothesis to clearly mark it. This is a term, and I'm sure you've written many hypotheses in your academic career. But again, you know, making sure that it is so clear and precise that we know exactly what your research is right there at the start. So important. Next slide, please. Okay, the why. So again, you're adding new research, new knowledge to the world. You're not repeating what other people have done. You're building on that knowledge or you're finding a new avenue. So telling us what the range is, how it connects to the field that you're studying is really important. The aim of it, so in, you, know, you are talking about what you want to accomplish before, but you, know, you can expand upon that in the why section. Uh, the, the, you hope to accomplish certain things, that you hope to achieve certain goals, and here's how you're going to do it. And then why it's relevant. Why should we care? Why should I, after reading your abstract, want to go and listen to your presentation or read your paper? Why is this connected to both your world and the bigger world? You know, when we get to the presentation workshops, we're going to talk a lot about that when you're talking about your research on how you connect it to both the personal and the global world. It's really essential. So you want to do that also in your abstracts, okay? So why is this important? Why is it relevant to what's happening in your particular discipline and to the world itself? And I can tell you, you know, valuable research, you can connect it. It sometimes may not seem obvious, but you, this is, again, one of the aims of writing an abstract and doing the research is to really focus down on why it's important. Um, and we're going to see that when um, Neela talks about her research here in just a little bit. Next slide, please. Okay, then you get to the how you've done it section of your abstract. What methods do you use? Uh, did you use to do this? Did you do it? Use a survey? Did you use a particular set of uh, uh, protocol? What uh, instruments did you use? Or what chemicals did you use? You know, what was the sample size for your, what population size? You know, description of that. You can talk about the design of the techniques how you collected the data, how you analyzed it, all of these things go into that method section. And it can be a pretty bulky section, and sometimes this can be one of the hardest parts to condense because you've, you, want to, you want to share everything, right? You want to show exactly how you did it, but that's going to be in your full presentation. You need to be concise and precise here, easily identifiable methods. And we'll talk about language here in a moment, but using easily understood uh, words instead of tons, tons of jargon 
it's really important. So like at the expo, for example, we have a lot of people from different disciplines. They may not be familiar with the specific research that you are working in. And you need to be able to have them read your abstract and have a good idea of what you're trying to do or what you did and how you did it. Uh, you, there are certain words that you'll have to use just because they're really crucial to your research. Sometimes it's good to have a little explanation for what it is. You know, if there's an abbreviation or, you know, different things like that, you can explain that so that people can understand. But, um, you know, that's where the methods section can get very heavy in that jargon. So you want to be sure that it's, it's understandable to as wide an audience as possible. Next section or next slide, please. Okay, then the what, how, the what was done, the results. So you wanna have a summary of this, and again, this will be a challenge to condense as well, because maybe you had a whole bunch of different results, maybe those results were very different from what you had listed in your objectives. Maybe you wanna put a ton of data that you got in there, but as we say here, only the essential data needs to go into the abstract. You can have more data on your poster, you can have more data when you talk about it, if you're doing an oral presentation but only the, the really essential data goes into your abstract. Because if you try to put everything in there, you are definitely gonna go over the word limit, right? So I would say the method section and your, and your results, those are two of the hardest things to condense because you wanna put everything in there. You put a lot of hard work into this research and you wanna throw it all in there. Like here's all the great stuff we found out, but you have to find a way to summarize that. We're gonna see an example of that here just in a few minutes, but that's an important part. And again, you see in all these pictures, people are walking through a poster. Like again, all these sections nicely line up with how your poster is gonna be designed as well. So again, creating a nice draft and then a nice uh, structure with your uh, abstract helps you then create your poster. Very helpful to connect the two. All right, next slide, please. All right, so then the significance. So this can be, and very often you're going to see people talk about how they got different results from what they were expecting. Uh, you can even talk about uh, parts of the, the, the research that didn't go well, that you had some failed experiments. Um, it didn't go the way you thought it would. Um, but then you have to evaluate. And this is where the critical thinking is really shown, that you've looked at the data that you've collected it, you've compared it to what your hypothesis is, and now you've assessed that and you've thought, said, okay, this is either, as we say here, that it's clearly you know, justified conclusions uh, and the key conclusions. There may be additional ones, but you know, again, if they aren't connected to what your hypothesis was or what your goals were, you don't really want to put them in your abstract. You may be able to talk about that again when you get into the presentation portion. But uh, you only want to have the key elements here, again, in your, in your abstract. And again, it could be different from what you uh, expected to happen. That's totally fine. Uh, again, if, you've, if you're not going to have a lot of results and conclusions if you haven't completed all of your uh, data. But you can create a window to what may happen here. So if you're writing your abstract and you don't have everything yet, you could say, so far, We've got this amount of data and we're looking at it going in this direction. And then when you get to your actual presentation with all of your data, you can then present it that way. If you're um, submitting to a works in progress section, we have that in the expo where you can actually present work that isn't completed, that is still, you're still collecting data. You can still hear with the significance, you can assess what you've already got and say it looks like we're going in this direction and then that leads nicely into your future directions and your uh, additional work that you're gonna do with your research. Um, so you can absolutely still have all of these sections in your abstract even if you haven't completed all of your research. Um, and even if you are submitting to a works in progress section, that's totally fine to still say this is the direction we're going uh, because the judges, they know these are works in progress. They're going to understand that when they read your abstract as well. So um, just make sure that's very clearly and carefully, uh, concisely written into your abstract so that they understand that. All right, next slide. 
All right, so who needs to read this other than you, <laughs> okay? And you're gonna have multiple drafts with every abstract. It's good to start writing them and have a, a few drafts. And you're gonna see a great example of that here in just a few minutes, but you absolutely need to make sure that your mentor is looking at your, your abstract. Uh, you are, for the most part, you are gonna be presenting someone else, that you, presenting research you've done with your mentor and other collaborators. So you want to make sure they've read it as well because you don't want to misrepresent what that research is. You are putting their name or names onto that poster and that research. They need to know what you are saying in that abstract and then they also need to see your poster. They need to know what you're presenting. But your mentor is there hopefully, <laughs> to give you excellent feedback on your abstract. You know, when I talk to students about this part, and I, I look at abstracts for students as well, that's why I put kind of administrator. I do give some feedback on abstracts and I'm happy to do that, but the number one thing I always say is make sure your mentor looks at it because, again, when you're presenting their research, they're gonna have an expectation of how that's presented and how you write about it. Um, Hopefully they give you enough freedom that you can write it yourself with their feedback because again, this is an incredibly valuable skill that you want to develop as an undergrad so you're prepared for all these other opportunities, but you hope it's a collaborative experience, okay? So, you know, you're going to get a full spectrum. Some mentors will look at it and say, great, shoot it back. Others are going to give you tons of feedback. Some of them may try to write it themselves, you know, but um, hopefully you have a positive relationship with your mentor where it's more collaborative, where you are really, they are mentoring you through this process uh, and giving you good guidance there. Um, giving you good examples as well. You know, there is slight differences between different uh, disciplines uh, you know, most of the STEM fields definitely have a specific format and have people have expectations with that. Same with the humanities, the social sciences. So again, you want to go to the professionals in that field, and that's your mentor. Um, but the others working in a lab, you know, say you're working in a lab with a postdoc who really is mentoring you as well, or a grad student, share it with them. Get feedback so that you have the best possible abstract. Um, I will say, you know, for Expo, we, we do accept a lot of abstracts, <laughs> okay? We have nearly 100% acceptance because we see this as a learning experience and we want everyone to have an opportunity to learn and to present. So there have been a few examples where we'll, we'll, we'll contact someone and say, this is not an abstract where maybe it's just like one sentence or something like that. Uh, but we do, and then people will get feedback from the judges, because the judges are going to have access to your abstract. In fact, very often they read it before they come and look at your poster or if they watch your presentation. So they're going to be familiar with it. So obviously you want to make sure it is connected to what you're presenting, that there's no significant major differences between what you said you were going to do and then what you were actually presenting. Uh, and again, you know, all these other people who are working with you in the lab, they are a great resource for this. So make sure that they're aware of it. Additionally, other professors can be a good resource. So say you are doing independent research in a school of medicine lab, but you have a professor that you're working with or an advisor uh, to get credit for that research, you know, share it with them as well. Again, more eyes that look at it and even people who don't know anything about your research. Because again, like I said, it's important for someone who isn't from the field to be able to understand what you've written, that it's not so jargon heavy and so uh, you know, insular that only a few people can read it and understand it. Okay. Now, that being said, you can go to journals, you can go to conferences, and you can look at tons of different abstracts and you will see some of them make no sense to someone outside of that field, right? Uh, but the best ones, the best ones are the ones where someone like me from a film studies background can look at it and have a really good idea of what your research is, what you were trying to accomplish, and why it's important. Why should I care? Why should I, as a film studies professor, care about your research on plant, you know, plants or something like that. Well, okay, it's connected to this research of finding out this medicine or what have you. Um, there's all sorts of ways to connect it and make it understandable for a layman 
uh, outside of there. Now, some conferences, and you'll get advice from mentors on this, and they can help you fine tune it. Some conferences are going to be much more like you have to make sure that you hit all these specific points for that specific discipline, and that's fine. But again, for Expo, and again, being able to talk about your research to a large group of people, it's really important because, you know, when you're applying for fellowships, when you're applying for scholarships, when you're applying for medical school or graduate school, when you're writing your personal statements, again, the better you are at talking about your research to anyone, the, be the more likely you are to get into those programs to get funding and that sort of thing because not everyone's going to be an expert in your field and very often you are the expert on your uh, research um, so you have to understand that so these are all different peoples that can look at your abstract give you feedback um, really important there all right next slide okay um so this was one of the first drafts of the first abstract I had to work on. And it's actually pretty much the bare minimum. First of all, I started the abstract by saying I study, which you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> um, I didn't really talk about why the, I, I talked about a gene in here, but I never talked about the importance of that gene relative to schizophrenia, which was my topic, or even why I was talking about schizophrenia. So this was, uh, this was what I started with, but this was far from what I would end up with. Okay, just real quick, can anyone give us, and Neelu, I so appreciate you being the, <laughs> the person sharing your work here. You're, I'm so grateful you can, but looking at this some, about some of the things I just said and some of the things that she just said, can you identify maybe some things that you would uh, change <laughs> just from your own, you can put it in the chat or you can speak up. I just think it'd be really interesting to see if you could spot any things that are a little bit challenging. Anyone typing anything or any thoughts? Anyone willing to step up? I mean, I'm happy with the criticism. There we go. All right, thank you, Taylor. So the DNA levels of the genes are difficult to understand and follow. I would agree with that. Uh, you'd have, that's, and you may need that in there, but it really, the, I mean, the flow of it, and the, there's not a lot of explanation of it, right? Um, but yeah, that's really good. How many words did you start off with here, Neil? Do you remember? Yeah, um, that was a big thing. I tried to stay under 250 words, and I think this was about 200. Maybe okay, so you, you had room to add more, such as, as Micah just put here, uh, a conclusion. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, you know, there's... Uh, not exactly a conclusion and, and kind of the significance of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of get to yes, and, and then we analyze this. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Good observation, Micah. Thank you uh, to Taylor and, and Micah. Real quick, I just, I forgot to do this here. Do we have anyone with us from uh, Step Up or CRISPR? Any folks there? They, the, their leaders just asked me to see if anyone had joined us from that. You can put it in the chat, but um, if anyone from those groups are with us today, it doesn't look like. I think everyone here is from McNair, pretty much. So, All right. Next slide for you, Neil, or continue. Sorry. Now, um, a lot of the points you guys just made, I noticed too, but I made a few differences. I actually put, like, um, why schizophrenia is important, why this <laughs> gene is important, um, and I try to put more information about the significance and all that, but like my results and methods and all, all the conclusion is still, it's still a work in progress. So 
I then ended up going to my grad students. So by the way, let's go back to the first one. This is my first draft. This is the draft that I came up with after talking to my grad student. So it's hugely different. And there's a lot more information on this one than there was in that first one. I talked more about um, the mice that, were, that we were using. I've talked more about the genes. I've talked more about the different proteins and uh, RNA transcripts that we were looking into. Um, and I've also kind of given more of a conclusion in this one compared to the other two. So it's insanely different. This ended up being what I used to uh, um, present my poster at the expo with. So this is approximately around 250 words. All right, and there's our information. Thanks so much again, Neil, for sharing that. Um, does, uh, do we have any uh, undergraduate research ambassadors joining us today? I just want to see if anyone came in while we were presenting. Raise your hand in the chat or looks like, okay, we haven't had any join us. That's all right though. Um, so now we have a little bit of time now to take questions about abstracts or anything else connected with research that we can help you with. Um, so feel free to put it in the chat or if you want to talk to us, put your mic on and uh, ask, ask away. We're here to help you out with uh, abstract writing. I was going to say, I know Micah's with us, um, and Micah, you're not STEM, right? Aren't you doing <laughs> humanities? So if you have any, you know, I will say, and I, I'm, I neglected, I should have put an example of a humanities abstract on here as well, but it really can be, basically, you're taking over the same format in that, you know, you have your thesis statement, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, connecting it to the, the bigger world of uh, your discipline. So say you're working with poetry and you, you're writing poems and you're doing research on that. You could talk about how that fits within the historical element, you know, or if there's a particular style that you're building on. And then you're going to talk to us about uh, the research that you did. So, you know, if you had to study certain historical elements or if you had to study particular theory or style, and then you can talk about how you applied that theory and style to your particular artistic expression. Uh, and then you can talk about what that process was like. And so with humanities, there's a bit of reflection as opposed to uh, kind of that summary, right? You're, it's, it's, you're still using your critical thinking skills, but you're gonna talk about what that process was like, that artistic process. And you, know, you have goals with that as well. You know, when you're creating a work of art, there you have a specific goal that you're trying to accomplish, you know, whether you're trying to write the best screenplay about a particular topic that you're passionate about, you know, or if you're trying to create a new painting that addresses this situation in the world or something like that, right? And then you could talk about the research that went into it, the techniques that you used, the work that you had to do to learn those techniques, and then, yeah, what that meant to you at the end and what you hope the further uh, results of that creation are? Is it going to, say you wrote a play, is it going to be performed on campus? Is it going to go to Broadway? You know, what your future endeavors are with that work of art um, and how it fits into your academic career as well, you know, because that's part of that reflection process. Uh, and that's how NCUR uh, has people present their work. So, um, you know, NCUR is the National Conference of Undergraduate Research, the biggest conference for undergraduates, and they have tons of humanities, they have tons of social science, and obviously tons of STEM, uh, but they actually have the students kind of read their artistic statement slash their abstract before they do a piece, whether it's a piece of art or whether they're singing or playing an instrument or reciting part of a play that they wrote, and then after that they talk about the, the results of that, and then they take questions afterwards. So the abstract for a humanities, it still kind of has the same structure, and you're still walking the person through what it took to create that work. Does that make sense to you? This, so we will be posting it on our YouTube channel, the Service Learning and Undergraduate Research 
Office of uh, YouTube channel. We put all of our workshops up there. So if you want to reference the slides or take a look at it for listen to what we said again, you can absolutely do that. You can send friends and family to that if you like. It is uh, available to the general public. But again, thank you all for joining us on a Wednesday morning. I know 9 a.m. is a tough time for people to get up, and we appreciate you collaborating with us on this because uh, one thing I always like to emphasize or talk about is we learn things from presenting these workshops, and so the questions that you ask help us improve on it or address issues that maybe we didn't think about. So we appreciate you giving us that feedback. Uh, so if, uh, Neela, did you have any other comments or, oh, I was just going to say this week, um, you probably know about it, but just in case you don't, the virtual graduate fair is going on. Uh, the, we have it posted on our, and we don't have a slide on it, sadly. I, I forgot to put a slide in there. But if you go to our social media or if you just Google UAB virtual graduate fair, they are having all this week uh, incredible opportunities to talk with and ask questions. Even if you aren't planning to go to UAB grad school, it's still a very valuable opportunity to just ask questions and find information about different programs that you might be interested in, either at UAB or somewhere else, because there are going to be commonalities of applying to schools or different types of programs, that type of thing. So it's a great resource to go. And so you should check it out. The schedule will be on their website for the UAB Virtual Graduate Fair. Uh, have any of you gone there yet? I'm just curious. Anyone attended any of it yet? Not yet, because I know um, we shared it with all the different summer programs. Well, if you have, oh, someone says they have. <laughs> Micah has, okay. Was it valuable for you? I'm just curious. Uh, it was. Good, awesome. So um, follow Micah <laughs> and attend uh, the virtual graduate fair. It's a great opportunity to ask questions, get information. Uh, they have representatives from all over the, the whole, uh, yeah, great. Count is going to go, and Darrell has gone as well. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here then. So thank you all again for attending today. We'll go ahead and post this up, and uh, hopefully next week we can see you for uh, the poster presentation, and we'll have a postdoc, uh, Dr. Christina Barrera, who uh, will be uh, leading that one. Uh, Nilu and I will be here as well, of course. Uh, but that will be a really great presentation on how to create a good poster. So thanks again, and uh, have a wonderful Wednesday.